Right, so uh, let's look at this example uh, for hypothesis testing. A student takes a multiple choice test. There are ten questions with four answers uh, for each question. Unfortunately, the student has attended very few lessons, so has to guess. The student gets five questions right. So, if the student's method of missing lessons and guessing uh, is a good, is it a good strategy? And also, the student claims to be an inspired guesser, and we want to find out whether that's true. So the first thing we should do is set up our hypothesis and before we do that we need to define what uh, P is. So let's say let um, P be the probability uh, the student guesses correctly. We can now define H0, our null hypothesis, as being P equals, or what's expected, uh, what's expected is uh, that um, uh, P should be a quarter, that means a quarter of them um, have an equal chance of being selected correctly. And our alternative hypothesis, which challenges the null hypothesis, is to say actually um, P is greater than a quarter. Um, so that the probability that this person actually guesses correct in more than a quarter of the questions and we're going to find out what the chance of that is now let's set a significance level uh, for our test and normally it should be given if it's not uh, we can assume it to be about 5% and uh, let's look at our data now. We know there's 10 questions, 4 possible answers, and this person's got 5 correct. So let's write down n equals 10 for 10 questions, 10 times attempted, and um, the number of correct equals 5. So in order to um, model this using some statistics, what we can do is uh, define x for a binomial distribution. And we'll define it as the number of correct guesses. So let's say let x be the number of correct guesses. Okay, and therefore if h0, we then write down if h0 is true, okay, let's assume it's true. If h0 is true, in other words, the probability of getting a correct answer is a quarter, then we know x is binomially distributed where we had 10 uh, results items and uh, with a probability of a quarter. Now the probability that um, this person act who, who got 5 correct uh, is an inspired guesser, um, we can look at that by looking at the probability x is greater than or equal to 5 Okay, and that's because whether the person gets 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 correct, which would be in fact even more surprising, all of that is covered within that region. And this, from the binomial tables, we know equals 1 take where the probability x is less than or equal to far, uh, 4, sorry. Let's change that. Okay, and that gives us 1 take away 0 0.9192. 0 0.9219 and that gives us 0 0.0781 now uh, it turns out that our value of 0 0.0781 is in fact greater than our 5% significance level so we can write down 0 0.0781 is greater than 0 0.05 we therefore accept our null hypothesis because that probability doesn't fall within the critical region and we'll conclude with a sentence that says uh, there is not sufficient evidence to suggest um, that the student is an inspired guesser so there is not sufficient evidence that the five percent level to suggest the 
student is an inspired guesser. So there we have it. Right, let's look at this example here. Um, th this time we've got the probability that a student at a certain school passes the S1 component is 0 0.8. A news user is appointed and takes the next group. Out of the 10 students, only 6 now pass. Should the head of maths be concerned? Right, uh, again, let's set up our null on alternative hypothesis. Let's begin by defining what P is. And let's say P is the probability a student passes an S1 exam. So let, let's say let P be the probability a student passes S1. Uh, our null hypothesis is simply that P equals 0 0.8, that's the status quo, that's what's expected. Our alternative hypothesis is what challenges uh, that, and from the data it seems that it's actually gone below 0 0.8, and we were asking whether the head of math should be concerned. We'll set the significance level to be... Uh, five percent since it's not explicitly given and so that means we'll look at the left end tail of the um, uh, of the binomial distribution so um, let's look at the data we've got and we've got uh, 10 student pass And uh, we have uh, sorry, ten, st ten students take um, S one, and only six pass. So therefore, if uh, the, our null hypothesis is true, we can set up a binomial distribution based on the fact that um, X. Let me just get rid of that. So let's define x firstly as being the number of students that pass. And then we can set up a situation where we know if h0 is true, x is binomially distributed with 10 and 0 0.8 and so therefore the probability that uh, we've got six passes and can be looked at as x is less than or equal to 6 which from our tables is 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 and again we'll take on the values 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 because obviously if uh, those number of students passed, um, we're still asking the question whether the head of math should be concerned. Okay, so um, we'll therefore include all our values uh, because we're investigating all of them. And so it turns out that obviously 0 0.129, that probability is greater than 0 0.05, our 5% significance level. So therefore, this doesn't fall within, that value of x equals 6 does not fall within our uh, critical region. And so we will accept h0. And by accepting h0, we can therefore conclude that there is insufficient evidence at the 5% level uh, to suggest the students are underperforming. So there is insufficient evidence at 5% level to suggest students are underperforming. And there we have it. 
Right, let's look at this example here. Um, so, using recent data provided by the low cost airline Brian Air, the probability of a flight arriving on time is estimated to be a 0 0.9. And on three different occasions, so let's just highlight that, um, I'm taking a flight with Brian Air. What's the probability I arrive on time on all three flights? Uh, and then we'll look at probability of arriving on t uh, exactly two occasions. And then the final one involves some hypothesis testing. So let's look at the first one. Uh, firstly, let's set up this situation by uh, defining x, and let's let let x be the number of times the flight is on time. Uh, the flight. Since that's what's given to us in the question. Now we know n the number of times that the flight is taken is three. P, the probability of success of it being on time is 0 0.9, and therefore Q has to equal 0 0.1. Now, um, if we were to model this using our binomial distribution, we therefore have a variable x, which is binomially distributed, where n equals 3 and p equals 0 0.9. And so to work out our first part, where x equals 3, we simply have um, 3c3 3 3, 0 0.9 to the power of 3 times 0 0.1 to the power of 0. We can substitute our numbers in and that will give us 0 0.729. Similarly, for x equals 2, we'll have 3c2 times 0 0.9 squared times 0 0.1 to the power 1 which gives us 0 0.243 now let's look at part 3 and in part 3 we'll want to find out whether Ryanair has improved its performance given that 19 out of 20 flights have actually arrived on time so let's define P as being the probability the flight is on time so let p equals the probability the flight is on time and we can then de define our null hypothesis our null hypothesis is simply that p equals 0 0.9 alternative hypothesis which is going to challenge that which is what Brian Air are suggesting is that um, p is in fact greater than 0 0.9 um, it's actually improved we can set our significance level to be 5% and given the probability is greater than 0 0.9 we'll be looking at the right end tail of this question so we have um, n equals 20 and uh, 19 are on time we can therefore to set up binomial uh, distribution we need to define x so let's say let x be the number of times a flight is on time be the number of times a flight is on time and therefore we have x is going to be binomially distributed where 20 where we have 20 um, outcomes items and um, each one with a probability of success of 0 0.9 so we want to work out the probability x is in fact greater than or equal to 19 uh, because we're looking at the right end tail of this region and this obviously will give one takeaway the probability x is less than or equal to 18 which is one takeaway 0 0.6083 which gives us 0 0.3917 now 0 0.3917 is clearly greater than our significance level 
so let's write that down 0 0.3917 is greater than 0 0.05 therefore we accept H0 and we should conclude with the sentence to say there is insufficient there is insufficient evidence to suggest that uh, Brian Eyre's performance has actually improved. So there we have there we have it.